Welcome to Smoky CNC Woodworks. I'm Brian and today I'm just going to answer some questions. I've been asked several questions through comments and emails, uh, some lengthier, more in-depth questions than others. And I always try to answer you, but on comments I'm not going to get just real in-depth on anything. I, at least I try not to. Sometimes I do. I get a little long-winded and just leave a huge paragraph. And I hate to do that in the comments section, but I figured I'd just address some of them. Some of them I've been asked several times about things. Okay, so first off, the first one I'm going to address is very simple. Uh, I get asked a lot, if, am I wearing the same hoodie or sweatshirt every day? I mean, <laughs> it appears that way because every time I have a video on, I seem to have this gray sweatshirt on. What this is about, my wife has made, I've got several of these sweatshirts, and it's got our new logo, if you can see it here. It's called the Vintage Canoe. And this is going to be the logo we use whenever we go to craft shows, trade shows, stuff like that. It's basically more about her clothing stuff. And she just wanted to rebrand it at the craft shows. And I'll have my stuff in the same booth, but I'll have me a sign that says Smoky CNC Woodworks right there you know, on her back wall. And I'll have my woodwork stuff around it. Now her current shop is called Get Right Designs. She doesn't have a website. You can find her on Facebook at Get Right Designs and see all the stuff she kind of has in her boutique. She does screen printing and embroidery and it's a bunch of women's stuff. But, <laughs> I mean, she makes me some cool stuff and so I wear it when she makes it for me. Next one I get a lot is what software am I using? So when I started out, I started out with VCAR 9.5 and it's also made by Vetric, Vetric VCAR. You see mine says Aspire right up here. That's because recently I have upgraded to their larger program that will allow me to do 3D graphics. Now Aspire still works on the same platform as VCAR, but it's just an add-on to VCAR. So you can see here you've got all your tools, and this is what it looks like in VCAR too, this right here. And then whenever you want to go over and do your tool pathing, it looks exactly the same for Aspire. The addition to of Aspire, <clears throat> you've got modeling over here, and what this stuff allows you to do, these tools will allow you to change rather regular 2D uh, photos and uh, vectors into 3D components. And so then once you've created a 3D component, I'll show you one real quick. You saw that I did one of their clip art things. Here a while back. We'll just show you a different one here. Here's a horse. So you get a this is what it looks like whenever it does this. Well I can come over here and click it. This is what it'll look like when it's carved. What I did was just went up here and split my screens to 2D and 3D. So we'll just minimize this. Put that back to full screen. So when I want to run over and do this and uh, do the tool pathing on this, I just click right up here like I do normally. And instead of using these normal tool path things, I can rough it out here or I can do a 3D finishing tool path. We'll just click the 3D finishing. That's an eighth inch ball nose. Let's calculate it. You can see down here it's thinking for me. Thinking up how best to do it. So that's what it looks like. I'll hit preview selected. And then it cuts it out like that. Let's just go with material color. No, you can see it better. But you can see that it's raised up out of the wood. So that's the program they use. So the second piece of software is Mach 3. This is it. I actually probably know a lot less about this than I do uh, VCAR or Aspire. Um, I use those other programs a lot more. Uh, it's a pretty simple deal. I mean, this is where I come in and I load the G code that appears up here in this screen. Uh, it's got your tells about your tool, it's got your feed rates, your speeds, uh, your spindle speeds, 
This is where you zero the machine. Uh, at some point one day I'll show you how to zero the machine. This over here has a display of what your G-code is and how it's going to cut and kind of what pattern it's following. That's just one screen of this. You can see up here there are tons of screens on this uh, program. This is what I initially had to use to set up all the electronics and tie all the drivers together. You do it through this program and uh, it runs the machine. That Mach 3 is a program I do need to become more familiar with. I need to study up on it more. It was just one of those things that once I got it up and running right, I was just happy to have the machine running and I went to play it. And there's a lot of things that I've left behind and hadn't taken care of since then because once I got it running right, I was happy just to be cutting stuff. So the next thing, uh, I get asked this a lot. I'm not an expert on the bits, but I'll show you what I do use. A lot of what I, you see me detailing with is a 90 degree V-bit. I use a 60 degree V-bit. Uh, reason being that the 60 degree just goes a little deeper, a little sharper point. And what you'll see it do whenever it's, when these V-bits are uh, cutting the design, if you pay close attention, the very tip of these things is all that's in there and it'll make real fine little lines. The next thing I use most is probably an end mill. I'll just show you the, you see me with a small end mill a lot. It's a little one eighth. This is a quarter inch just for it easier for you to see. It's just a double fluted uh, bit. I use this more for clearing or cutting stuff out. I mean, going around the profile of things. Another one is a straight bit, basically just like the end mill. You can just buy these at the lumber yard. In mills, generally, you have to order them. And I've got another one I hadn't even tried using yet. This is a half inch uh, straight bit. And basically, you just use the, I would use these for just clearing more area. Uh, just if I had a big area on the board that I was clearing out and going to leave detail in one little spot. I figure I'll start using these a lot more as I do more 3D stuff. Uh, this is the ball nose. This is what you'll see me using more with the 3D stuff. Again, here's a 1 8 inch ball nose. And there is a quarter inch ball nose. Basically, this will do the same thing as the larger end mill. I'll use this for clearing, roughing stuff out. And then I'll switch over to the little bitty one for the detail. But uh, this is just a, a rounded bit made for doing detail like that. And I mean, honestly, that's, that's really all the bits I use right now. Uh, and now I did a video here a while back about sharpening them. I just try to keep the uh, V-bits sharpened and that way it just kind of makes the life of them last just a little longer. Next one is a, a question I never even occurred to me to cover, but somebody was asking about what equipment I'm using to film with, uh, what tripods, what camera. Well, the camera is a Sony Handycam. And I bought this little camera at Walmart. I knew my wife wasn't going to let me bring her DSLR out here and set it up in a dusty shop with a good chance of it getting knocked over, which this thing has been knocked over a few times, and it's been a pretty tough camera so far. So that's the camera I have. And then I've the tripod I'm using out here is one that I've just slapped together when I, we first started. And uh, you can see I just built a little base, and I've used wing nuts. So I can tighten and untighten. This is a little quick release that I got just not so long ago. So I can yank the camera on and off this thing real fast. It's really nice to use. The uh, In the other shop, I actually have a, tra a traditional tripod. It's a traditional tripod that allows me to really get up above what I'm working on and kind of stay out of my way. But uh, other than that, I, I don't really have high dollar equipment that I'm filming on. At some point, yes, I want to step it up, but right now, this is what I've got, so. Okay, so the next question is uh, going to be a little longer one, I guess. It, I get asked, where am I at when these videos are being shot? And if I'm always in the room when the machine's running? The answer to that is yes. I mean, on the rare occasion I get a phone call or something, I will step right outside this window right here and watch the machine while I'm talking on the phone. 
but I don't wander off. I mean, I want to stay with the machine because it's a machine. It can screw up. So, and then if it's something that I'm cutting a lot and that I'm very comfortable with the programming, I've got a lawn chair right there and I sit right there and look right up here at the table, which is a mess right now. And I'll sit there and watch it from there. And what I'm talking about stuff that I cut a lot, I think I've got one in here, in fact, that I was finishing on. Uh, it, this, I mean, you saw this video. This was like video number two, three, four, something that I did. And it's the Jesus' image in a cross. And I did it initially on MDF, but since I've started doing it out of wood, I make these things all the time. I'm selling them right and left. So stuff like that, I mean, I, I'll, I can start it, and I'll sit there and play on my phone, catch up on comments, whatever. And I just look up every now and then to make sure it's still doing what it's supposed to be doing. Uh, I'll leave a link to that video. You want to go back and watch that if you had not seen it yet. I mean, it's a neat, a neat graphic that it came out with because it is one of those that you watch it, cut it, and until I put paint to it, you're sitting there going, this thing just made a mess. The next one is, uh, do I wear any protective gear out here? Because they've, I've had people that have shown concern that I'm running around without any kind of protective gear at all. So, yes, I do. Y'all just don't see me in it. So this is what I look like whenever you don't see me. And the earphone, earphones aren't a good idea because I can't tell how loud I'm talking. So yeah, I'm always, I'm always covered up. I mean, even in the shop when I'm working, I've always got ear and eye protection on. Don't always wear the mask. Uh, I just got this mask. I've always used the paper ones for a long time, these kind. And I saw these and I mentioned them to my wife and she bought me some for Christmas. These things are great. This company is called Infantile. And this is a, I don't know if it's a neoprene, what kind of fabric it is. But it's a mask, easy to put on and off. It's got a carbon filter in it that comes with, when I got it, it came with more filters. So you use it until it gets nasty and toss it, put a new one in. And I've actually got two of these masks, so when this thing gets messy, nasty you can take the filter out chunk it in the washing machine and I've got another one over here in the package I'll leave a link for these and y'all can go check them out they're really they're not real expensive I think that is around 20 bucks but you can buy the replacement cartridges and they are a lot more comfortable than those little paper masks the other thing you saw me wearing there this is actually a new set of headphones I was wearing these these are my shooting headphones these are noise canceling and you can see here, these have microphones on. You can turn these on, and whenever the a gun goes off, these get immediately quiet where you can't hear the gunfire. You can hear it, but just not very loud. So I was talking to my wife about these, and she found these 3M uh, WorkTunes headphones. They, too, are a noise-canceling Headset. I did. It took me a while to figure out the noise canceling side of it because I could still hear through it. And even with noise canceling, you're going to hear a little bit of something really loud. But these will Bluetooth to my phone. And so, to answer your other question, whenever the machine's running, I'm probably jamming out to something. I'm probably listening to music. So, these things are awesome. And the eye protection is 3M, uh, just 3M safety goggles. Uh, I order them off of Amazon. They're not very expensive for what they are, but these have turned out to be really tough. I bought the cheaper ones at Walmart and whatnot. They scratch up real bad, and you drop them, they may break. And if you ever set anything on them, they'll break. You can still break these, but they've just been more durable for me, and I don't have to constantly replace them. Then the last thing is lighting. I know, guys, my lighting's not the greatest out here. Right now, I'm using a couple of uh, desk lamps. And I just position them and try to give it the best light possible. There was one of the videos early on that I was able to use my shop light. Immediately following it, I'm hoping just the bulb has gone out. I have not ran across the bulb yet. I just need to look them up on Amazon and see if I can find a bulb to order for it. But this thing, unbelievably bright. My problem is, is I don't want to wash out what you're seeing. And that's the problem I had with this bright of a light because it really was too bright. But... 
I'll come across a happy medium there somewhere and I'll find something good and uh, I'll get it and we'll start using it in the videos. Well guys, that's about all I've got. I just thought I'd answer a few of the video or the a few of the videos, a few of the questions today and just try to give you more insight on everything that I'm doing and what I've got going here but outside of what you see. I mean, at some point I'll show you what I've got in the wood shop, what tools I'm using there. I've got a bunch of them over there, but I don't, I mean, you don't see a lot of what I've got. Uh, like I said, I'll leave links for all this stuff down below that I showed you, and if you want to go look at them, you can. And it's stuff that just makes life easier for me. I mean, the headphones is probably one of the favorite things I've got because... Well, it's awesome I can just sit out here and listen to music all the time instead of just listening to the nothing and the machine buzzing in the background. So guys, if you had not done so yet, please subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.